It's time now for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, sports, showbiz and beyond, with relentless talk of Scottish independence and with Plaid Cymru in Wales enjoying growing support. Why is English independence, or at least devolution, not a greater talking point? Well, it's a subject close to the heart of my Mark Meets guest tonight, who is Robin Tilbrook, top solicitor, but also the leader of the English Democrats. Robin, welcome to Mark Dolan tonight. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, notwithstanding that devolution would be revenge for Scottish devolution and Welsh devolution, uh, does it stand up as a good idea in its own right for England? I think it does. Uh, at the moment, we're basically subsidising Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland uh, to the tune of probably something like uh, £70 billion a year. Um, Does that and, tie in with, in Scotland, the Barnet formula? Yes, exactly. Mm. It is, it is uh, the Barnet formula. It's, it's not only um, an income um, figure, there's also a capital figure as well. So uh, what happens when um, the government decides it's going to spend £100 billion or so on uh, HS2? You then get a vast figure coming of, of capital spending on, for um, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, where they haven't even got projects to put it on. So I've got some fag packet numbers here. You're suggesting that the union is effectively costing England between 60 and 70 billion pounds a year. Oh, at least, yes. I mean, the last time, the, last time the sums were properly done, it was 69 billion pounds a year. OK, uh, which is uh, about a third of the cost of the entire NHS. Yes, and it's uh, also at least triple, may maybe quadruple the amount that we were once giving to the EU. Mm. So it's, it's a huge sum. Uh, what do we get in exchange for it? My sort of jokey reaction is we get the bill and the blame. <laughs> because the fact is we, we, we don't get any credit for that. People don't say, you know, England's been kind and, and uh, handed out all this money. Um, and in fact, what the British um, political establishment want to do is to break England up into regions. And the, these, these regions are completely bogus. There's no sort of history. What, with local mayors and all the rest of it? Yeah, so like the, the North East, mm. uh, for, for example... Um, the reason why they, uh, that, you know, that, that crashed as a project uh, when Prescott was trying to push for it um, is, of course, that um, they, they, they were basically trying to say that the whole of the people that lived in the North, the North East were going to be Geordies. Yeah. Um, and, Good luck uh, with that. <laughs> that. That didn't work very well. They got 79% vote against it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. When politicians try to superimpose their will on a community or on a region yeah. or an area, uh, ignoring history and ignoring uh, local culture. So uh, what about the union? I mean, uh, you know, the United Kingdom, it's a country and all countries subsidise poorer parts. What's wrong with that? So um, we've got a situation where in England, the poorer parts of England get less subsidy than some of the rich parts of Scotland. All right. Because so your, your argument would be England rich, Scotland poor is not the correct metric. No, it isn't. It mm. isn't. I mean, we, 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 it's not uh, done in a way that's fair. It's not intended to be uh, fair. It's intended to reward Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland in a way that we don't get um, for, for England. So what's on your manifesto? Uh, well, apart, apart from uh, uh, independence for England. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the main... Is it independence? It's not just devolution. Well, yes, so, so we, we... At one time, we used to argue for um, a, a, uh, an, English an English parliament, first minister and government... Equivalent to Holyrood. ..with at least the same powers as the Scottish ones within mm. a federal UK. What we then found was that um, uh, Westminster politicians were saying, England's too big... For some reason, I, you know, the idea that England is too big to have its own parliament is just ludicrous when you think, you know, France, perhaps. Um, and also they, they were really talking about um, wanting to break England up into these regions. And so what we've got come to, really, is that we have a choice between whether England is broken up or whether the UK is broken up. Mm. Um, and... For me, uh, I'd, I'd rather have the UK broken up, if that's the case. I don't think England has actually been the, the, the major push behind this, because um, obviously all the running's been done so far uh, in these arguments by Scotland and, to some extent, Wales. Um, and I think probably more um, in the future will be by Northern Ireland as well, because we've now had this, this court case that's gone all the way up to the Supreme Court, yeah. in which it's been held that the, a, a key part of the Act of Union got repealed without there even being an act to make it happen. 
you know, it's quite extraordinary. Yeah, the, the, and that's uh, before you, you get to uh, the uh, Belfast um, Northern Ireland Agreement, it, yes. the Good Friday Agreement, all, yes. all of that. Um, how would England fare on its own internationally, economically, militarily? So the main argument I've um, encountered over the years with um, particularly senior Tory politicians mm. um, is what they say is that the reason why we've got to keep the union is because it enables us to punch above our weight on the world stage. Um, they don't come up with any other sensible argument at all because there isn't any, really. Because England on its own would be a rich country. England on its own would be rich. It would be uh, richer, com in com fact. Comparable than... to what sort of other countries? Well, uh, you know, mm. Switzerland, right. Sweden, you were mentioning <laughs> earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of my favourite countries. Um, but well, listen, what about the emotional argument? My listeners, my viewers are watching in Belfast. They're in Cardiff. They're up in Edinburgh and yes. Glasgow and Aberdeen. I'd hate to lose them. Well, you, we, do, you have we, an emotional, we, do you not have an emotional attachment? Wouldn't we to the still union? be friendly? I mean, you know, the fact is, Canada's independent. Mm. Are, we, are we not friendly with Canada? Are we friendly with with uh, Australia? They, they've still got the same monarchy as. as but we, I'm as sure. We I'm sure you admired the Queen. I'm sure you admire our current King. And and what they represent, what they stand for, is the United Kingdom of. Uh, Great Britain and Northern Ireland, you know, it's, it's our country. You want to break it, that up? It was the crown of England beforehand, wasn't it? Mm. Um, and, and what about uh, the North-South divide? Would there be issues there? Would it, would it accentuate the North-South divide if we had England alone? No, no. Wouldn't that become two countries in no, itself? of course not, because the, the whole point of... Because that's how it is uh, for uh, Italy. They uh, hate each other, the North and South. Yes, but Italy only was unified in um, 1863. England was unified in 927. Um, you know, we, we, are, we have this immense history, the longest history of any nation state on earth, of being a, a united entity. Fascinating conversation. Uh, I can understand why uh, you're engaged in it. I'm a little split because I do love our union, but you've raised some great points. Thank you very much. Which is what the show's all about. So do come back and see us again soon. My thanks to Robin Tilbrook, who is the leader of the English Democrats. Uh, lots more to come, including the papers next. <laughs>